Fueled by Deathcast. But, you know, I was like 20 years old and I thought, fuck, remember when, you know, bands had three minute songs and people like the Who smashed their equipment and yeah, told people yeah. to fuck off, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, that it sort of disappeared, you know? So it was like, you need some excitement in your life. So that's how we got back to, so like, the, you know, the shorter songs bit of energy right. and also singing about stuff you know that was relevant to us and the human condition i mean we connected a lot of ways with people that um oh i feel like that too or i've had that and all that you know yeah. rather than singing about mushrooms in the sky and stuff and <laughs> it's like fuck yeah you know i gotta pay my bills too and right you yeah. know and my life's fucking shit so let's celebrate it rid of me you know all kinds of things and you know, there's heavier scenes with Buzzcocks as well with the lyrics and oh, of, of and course. the songs and the music and all that. So that was the importance of it, really. It was like trying to do music that was like, I say, relevant to you and, and had some preciousness and passion and all the kind of things. You know, was it tough to navigate the music industry at that point because there was all of this progressive rock at the time, and <coughs> you guys were. I mean, coming out there and being as real as possible. Like, was it tough to to navigate and during those times? A little bit, yeah. I mean, it, we made our we made our first demo, and really, we set out to do, make the most uncommercial music possible. Mm-hmm. You totally, know? yeah, yeah. And we made this uh, this uh, demo. We uh, and we well, we made this song, four songs, and it was like we, we come from Manchester originally, so Manchester's like you know two hours away from London. Uh huh. Two hours on a train with 200 miles. And he's like, if we go with these tapes, um, they'll probably laugh us out of the building or something. So we came up with the idea of making our own record. Now, I know back back in the 50s, you used to do it in the States, but even that, but you know, everybody's kind of like, if I do a nice song, I'll get a deal from this big kind uh, right. A&R man. Yeah, right. yeah. And you got to suck dick and do everything else. Right? <laughs> yeah, and we yeah. thought, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> and somehow we come up with this idea for like, um, 500 pounds, say $500 equivalent, we can make a 1,000 records to yeah. the people we're playing to in Manchester. You know? yeah. And it was like, it's seen as a stroke of genius now, but at the same time, it was a stroke of genius, but also a stroke of necessity. It was like, yeah. well, if we make our own record, we don't have to do all that begging record companies because right. I'm sure they're not interested. As soon as we did that, that inspired a lot of other bands to do it. Because we was the first on the block. Right? 